Welcome today to uh, In My Backyard. Today our guest is Sarah Barkhouse. Thank you for joining us today, Sarah. You're welcome. Thank you. And you have a company called Vera Flora Farm. Yep. And you sell organic flowers. Yes. Yeah. Cut cut flowers. Cut flowers. Mm -hmm. Yep. And your logo or your slogan on your website says, our flowers are local, healthy, and beautiful. Yes. And I would expect <laughs> no less. <laughs> so you're in Gilsom mm -hmm. and you have how much you have about an acre? Oh no. Or you we, have more now? We have about only a quarter acre a in quarter cultivation. Acre. Wow. But a quarter acre it packed a lot of flowers. full of flowers right. is a lot of flowers. Yeah. Uh, very narrow pathways and mm -hmm. very wide beds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a lot of weeding that you have to do or are you guys in um, we really try to stay on top of it. We use a lot of mulch, mm -hmm. like straw mulch, and we use black landscape fabric yeah. mulch and try not to churn up those weed seeds and disturb a lot. And we've had really good luck with staying on top That's of the weeds. That's great, because yeah. this is not your only job. No, it's no, not. I have a full-time office job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is nights and weekends, yeah. and um, it needs to be efficient and you know working smarter instead of harder right. but this is something that you love oh yeah i wouldn't yeah. do it yeah otherwise it'd be right. insane <laughs> yeah. yeah so tell me a little bit about how you um might have gotten into this as a child yeah. what do you remember you know did you like to pick flowers or yeah. what, what was it like for you as a child so i grew up and had a nice big backyard that bordered with woods and i think you know the people who owned the house before us had some nice plants but my parents did not care about that sort of thing right. so it sort of became a little overgrown on the edges and i remember growing up I take the kitchen scissors and go out and I felt like I was like exploring and hunting and I would cut anything I could no matter what season it was. We'd have Easter holiday at our house. My mom had no flowers on the tables. I would go out as a young kid and pick whatever I could and put in little vases and pretend I was pruning things and do stonework and and I didn't know back then that that was something that I could have followed. Mm -hmm. I went to a, a high school that was not a vocational high school, so it was on the college track, and I no one ever said, you know, agriculture is a career track, and right. so I, you know, had a four-year degree, and um, it wasn't too long after that that I, you know, wasn't really excited about any certain career, and I took an internship at Stonewall Farm, mm -hmm. and I was lived on the farm for a year and was an organic, you know. A vegetable grower and um, the farm manager that year said you know we really want to expand our cut flowers this year take them to farmers market would you be interested in picking out some seeds handed me a seed catalog and whew, my whole world opened <gasps> ah. I never looked at a oh, seed yeah. catalog before and it was like finding like that you know hidden Rosetta Stone or something well, you, I think you became an artist <laughs> because that was your brush, yes. you know, all those colors. Yeah. Because I remember we did a show a ways back for In My Backyard, mm -hmm. and we went out in the field, and we were taking pictures, and it was really beautiful. Uh, lots of yeah. reds. We grew I, a lot that year, and it got yeah. pretty much turned over to me. And that year, a woman came um, out to the farm and said, I'm getting married here. Can I buy your flowers for my wedding? And it sort of clicked. Mm. And I was like, oh, I could farm but specialize in flowers and provide for local weddings. And, and lo and behold, this is happening all over the country. Yeah. Um, there's a really big movement right now to go back to U.S. grown, you know, natural flowers. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so ever since that year, I, I worked for Stonewall for a number of years, and then I started my own business. Yeah, that's great. So, so is this what you wanted to do? What, what did you want to do when you were first, when you were growing up? Do you know? I've never been someone who's really career driven. Uh -huh. I've been more driven by sense of place and, uh -huh. you know, relationships. And um, so I, I didn't really have a strong focus for a vision for what I do. But isn't it funny, how, yeah, isn't it funny how you've got that? I in will your say, heart, almost. I mean, right from the beginning yeah, when you were a child. I will say, I always knew I wanted in some way to impact people's lives mm -hmm. and, you know, to give back. And um, I feel like I do that sort of indirectly because flowers make people joy. really happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. so your company is called Vera Flora Farm. Mm -hmm. Where did you get that name? Well, my father's mother, um, her name was Vera May Barkhouse. 
and um, she was the only relative I knew on either of my parents' sides who cared at all about having a flower garden. And I was just enchanted. Like, I'd go to her house, and there was raspberries and blueberries and just flowers everywhere. And I thought, this must be where it comes from. I think it skips a generation sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and um, so... Um, her, and she never liked her first name. You know, she grew up with it and thought it was ugly, and mm -hmm. I always thought it was beautiful. And it means truth in Latin, and then flora, flowers, mm -hmm. true flowers. So it had, a, like, a double connection for me. Yeah, yeah. So. that's so nice. Yeah, it just yeah, it, came to me. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> so what, what do you <clears throat> offer um, for products? Um, I know that you have cut flowers, but I noticed on your website, which is a beautiful website, Thank you. mm -hmm. um, you've got a lot of different... Um, things that you offer. Um, you have headpieces and you have, yeah. you know, um, containers that you, you put flowers in. Um, but what makes you stand apart from other florists? Well, I mean, mostly that we work with seasonal flowers. So the flowers that I'm using for your wedding in June, say, or July, are flowers that are naturally growing in this area that you're getting married in, in June or July. Um, so I am not the florist that if you want, you know, um, you want peonies in September, I don't have peonies in September because they're not in bloom then. Right. Um, so I think it is very, you know, is beautiful and charming and natural to have your flowers sort of blend with the season. And um, I mean, and of course, we put a lot of focus on the organic growing of mm -hmm. our flowers. So right. they're just totally natural and safe. So you just said organic. Yeah. Organic are, flowers. Yeah. Now, we have organic vegetables, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but what makes, why would you want organic flowers? Well, I should say we are not a certified organic, That's USDA okay. certified mm -hmm. organic, but we do follow organic the practices. national organic practices. Mm -hmm. um, so why organic flowers? I mean, you're right. You're not eating them, although my But you children, have herbs. <laughs> you have herbs in your flower yeah, arrangements too. Yep. Yeah. And my children might accidentally eat something. Mm -hmm. and, and there's um, a lot of edible flowers. There are. Yeah. But I mean, you're still touching them. And as a, the florist, because um, I am a f farmer florist, I'm working with them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it just feels like the right thing to do. I mean, putting it's not isolated. You put chemical fertilizers all over your flowers and that's draining right into the water table. And that's not my water table. That's my whole neighborhood's exactly. water table and beyond. Right. So, I mean, we just really care about the ecosystem and um, trying to leave a place better than we found it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's important. It is important because, you know, people don't realize that when they put things into the soil that the plants have roots. Mm -hmm. They just don't think about it because mm -hmm. it's not there. They can't see it. So it goes up through the, the stems. It goes into the leaves. It goes into the flowers. And as you said, you know, if somebody's going to eat it or if you're touching it, you might be getting some of that into your body, yeah. you know, just going through your skin, <clears throat> things like yeah, that. Yeah, and everything's connected. You yeah. know, nothing disappears. That's right. So it just goes somewhere else. Right. So, so you make, um, you have arrangements, you have mm -hmm. bulk flowers, and you do a mix and match. Yep. Um, we'll also touch on your CSA mm -hmm. later on. Because to me, honestly, that is such a gift. Um, <laughs> so we'll talk about that because I'm told that I'm now able to buy a CSA share <laughs> because we should have Yay. flowers in our house. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. But let's, um, let's look at some of the photographs that we have sure. of your farm and um, some of the arrangements that you've done. Okay. So let's see, we have, there's your logo yes. on your, from your website. My brother-in-law designed that. That's beautiful. Yeah. And now you had a, a wonderful article um, in the Monadnock table. Yes. Oh, this is my opportunity to tell the world that I was pretty pregnant in that picture and not just overweight. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been self-conscious about that. Yeah. yeah, that was in 2014 and the photographer Kimberly Peck came out to the farm and that was late July and took some beautiful sunset pictures and that we were so grateful for the article in the Mananoc table. Yeah, magazine. I, it was beautiful. I, I do read every article. And I, I read that I read cover the whole thing. Cover. I do too. Mm -hmm. it, that is such a wonderful yep. magazine, local, yep. and it talks about all the things that, that I'm really interested in too. And it focuses on food. So it mm -hmm. was this rare time that they were going to do a flower issue. Yep. And I was very honored that they... Yeah. Popped us in yeah. there. And they, they took beautiful pictures. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, those were very, very nice. Yeah. So why local? 
um, what makes it um, important um, to your clients for people to have local products and things like that? Um, well, I mean, I think one, you're supporting a, a small local business, you're mm -hmm. supporting the local economy. Um, and then again, I touched on the, you know, the seasonality of the flowers. Um, I mean, I really think it's just important to support your local agricultural producers or they're not going to exist right. and um, to just try to keep that land in cultivation right. instead of it all going to development. Yeah, yeah. You know, people just don't realize how important it is to know what you're putting into your soils mm -hmm. and knowing what you're eating and all of this. So, you know, as much as when the, the organic uh, movement started, as much as I fought it thinking it's just a way to, you know, have people ask more money for their products, it really does make a difference. And you can tell even just in like the food, the taste of the food, um, when it's local, it just has more flavor to it. Yeah, it, anyone who's eaten a carrot fresh right. out of the garden knows mm -hmm. there's such a difference. Right, yeah. and so buying your flowers locally, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're fresh. Yeah, there is still a life force there in is. those flowers. There is. When they're picked and they're, you know, hours old from the garden, they you're really still seeing can, a radiance from them. And you can them. smell them. Yes. And, you know, like yeah. when you buy, sometimes when you buy flowers in a store, flowers that have been cut for quite a while, you don't smell yeah. the essence from them. And those qualities have been bred right out of those right. flowers in exchange for qualities of, you know, longer stems or, you know, tougher uh, buds so that they can be transported mm -hmm. and things. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, organic. Mm -hmm. What is organic? Organic is growing without the use of synthetic and chemical fertil fertilizers, pesticides, um, herbicides, fungicides, that kind of thing. So all your inputs are um, are are natural. You're mm -hmm. coming from a right. You know, so you're using source. compost um, yep. to um, help enhance yep. your, we use your local, gardens. Local compost, um, and we try to make our own compost. Um, and we use like organic Omri certified um, inputs for the soil. Mm -hmm. so. so, so it's important, and that's why possibly this might be a little bit more expensive than what you're getting in a, in a store. But there's a reason for it. It's just like anything; you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, I think that it is. It's really important. So I'm really glad that you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, influences in design and your style. Um, I love, there was a, the picture that um, you had um, provided that had a barn on the back and the flowers are there. Mm -hmm. I just, I love the way that you arrange the flowers and you put herbs in mm -hmm. and it just, it's very healthy looking. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that right <laughs> oh. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got zinnias, you've got yeah, there's dahlias, um, there's marigolds, scented yep. geraniums, um, artemisia, crocosmia. There's, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going and, on and there. And it's not that <laughs> other people couldn't grow these in their own gardens, mm -hmm. but they don't have to take care of it. You do all of the arranging and you, mm -hmm. you um, have it all set up for them. I mean, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, for arrangements, you know, I do a lot of special arrangements upon request. So mm -hmm. that could have been, uh, you know, for a birthday or an yeah. anniversary or a centerpiece for mm -hmm. a party. Or, yeah. 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 And varieties of flowers. Do you have any favorites? I know you like peonies. Yes, that's but, my favorite. But what are your go-tos when somebody says, I need six arrangements and I need them in a week. Yeah. I know it matters what time yeah, of year it is. Yeah, it really it does. It depends what time of year. They're all yeah. sort of like steal the show at different times of the year. Right. So, I mean, you you need big focal flowers um, because if you don't have big full flowers, then it takes a lot of stems to fill a vase. Yeah. Uh, if you're working with just tiny little, mm -hmm. you know, accents or fillers and th or things like that. So, you I mean the big Showstopper flowers are the peonies, um, garden roses, uh, dahlias, sunflowers, zinnias, things like that. Yep. And they're important to have and, and our uh, lilies and other things. And then you want your, your smaller, more delicate things that bring interest and mm -hmm. um, your greenery and other fine textures to fill in. And you do this all in a quarter of an acre. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep. that is crazy. That yeah. I mean, that, that's really that's so wonderful. So, what have you learned um, through all of this? Um, because I'm sure that you've had some lessons along the way. 
Yeah, this is our 11th season and I sometimes shake my head and think, how could I not know more by now? But I mean, we're always learning because every year is going to be different. And um, I just think how knowledgeable I will be when I'm a 60-year-old woman still growing flowers. And, and you'll be your grandmother. Yeah. So I've learned that, you know, I learned early on, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of manual work, but I love that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you have to really pay close attention to what's going on. You need to go out like all the time and be constantly checking in on things mm -hmm. and walking your gardens. And um, I've learned that really the whole year, the whole season, even if we have flowers for just three or four months, the whole season, the cycle is important to finish because, you know, how you wrap up and take care of your equipment really affects how you get started the next right. spring mm -hmm. and all the planning that goes on is important rather than just winging it in the spring. You mean you don't just go to the store and buy a four pack <clears throat> and you stick no. it in your garden and that's it? <laughs> no, it's... Um, my favorite time of the year is seed, cat seed catalogs, spread out the calculator, the spreadsheets, um, and just all the planning of it. And I think as soon as the season's over, I'm already so excited to think about next year right. and all the things I've learned, things that didn't go well, things that did. You know, what do we want to do more of? What do we want to do less of? Right. That kind of thing. Right. So you said we. Yes. It's, is it just you that runs this whole business? I run it with my partner, Vanessa. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you have it's some associates, our... some small associates. Yeah, we have two They do little... a little bit of flower arranging for you and things like that? Yes. We have okay. two little children. And um, my, my daughter, who's my oldest, was born the year I started the flower farm. And so she was literally right there in the baby wrap while I'm seeding and mm -hmm. getting soil all over. Yeah. And, yeah. So she probably... Likes she, to be out with the flowers? Yeah, she does, and she loves arranging with me. Yeah. Yeah, Isn't I think we have a thing? photo of that. We can maybe show yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. You know, getting kids into the garden is so important, and mm -hmm. I know that what you're doing is mostly cutting and doing arrangements and, and things for weddings and stuff like that, but getting the kids out to the gardens to play in the dirt or to plant yeah. the seeds. Even sunflower seeds are so easy to plant. Yeah. You know, and did she help you with any of those? She last year became my seeding buddy and would stand up on a crate at the seeding table uh -huh. and we'd share a tray and she would do her rows and I would do my rows. And she by the end of the seeding period got really fast. And um, you know, the kids just have their own miniature trowels uh -huh. and um they love watering. So if they have a miniature watering can, especially in a season like we had last year, it was so dry. I'm like, go for it. Yeah, keep watering. <laughs> Here's the hose. <laughs> Just water to your heart's content. So there's and they lots think of it's things. Fun. Yeah, so. and they like to plant. You know, I'd make the hole, and they'd put the transplant in the hole. Yeah. So there's, it's never ending. But it goes a lot slower when you're well, incorporating your children. It does. Um, which is hard sometimes with the production for, aspect right, of it. Right, for but, a business, but for people that are at home. Yeah. You just need to, I know, I ha, I mean, who am I to, take, to say? You need to slow down. Yeah. And just enjoy the time that you have because your kids are gonna be I know. tiny just for so I long. Know. So, you know, you really have to enjoy that time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and they're learning so much right. by being out there. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. What is the process for somebody that um, is interested in uh, having arrangements or, you know, any of that kind of stuff? Do they come to your farm or um, how do they how do they learn about you? Because I know sure. that you do have flowers at the co-op yep. in Keene. Yep. Um, but how do people find out about you? Well, I think we're a good presence in the community. We mm -hmm. have bouquets at the co-op like July through September. Um, we do a lot of donations for community events that are going on. Mm -hmm. So um, our name is has just gotten out there. But um, our website is the best way. And then we have a Facebook and Instagram page. So mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, just going there, you can send us a message. The, um, the website has a contact form and you can right. fill out. And that's usually how my wedding inquiries begin, mm -hmm. and then we go from there. How, how early do people have to contact you? Because, yeah. because you're doing this locally, mm -hmm. and 
they may want lots of flowers, do they need to contact you like a year in advance so that you can have the right flowers? Because what yeah. happens if you don't have the flowers that yeah. they're looking for? Yeah, it's a really interesting dance working right. um, with weddings. And so the sooner the better because you're right, for those weddings where I we are contracted before, uh, I, before I even pick out the seeds and things for the year, I have a wedding that, that worked out this fall for, mm -hmm. and um, or it's it's late summer, but uh, I specifically, you know, am starting more in that color range that she has for her wedding. And right. um, otherwise, I'll tell people, you know, what the you more open you are to different colors, the right. more availability there is. Mm -hmm. I've had weddings where people have said, my colors are teal and silver. I said, well, there's no teal or silver flowers, so what do you want to do? Yeah. You know, and um, I will not spray paint my flowers, right. which I've been Thank asked you. to do. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, you know, just being open. Mm -hmm. And I promise people that, you know, it's not like I can go on 1-800-Flowers and point to what your exact arrangements will look like. Right. You have to just trust me, trust, mm -hmm. you know, Mother Earth is going to provide something beautiful mm -hmm. and we're going to make it all come together and we'll work within this range for you. But yeah. I can't tell you because you don't really know yeah. what the garden's going to do until you just get down to it. Right. So, so where do you think this comes from? And, you know, like... Not everybody can arrange flowers as much as we all think we can. Um, you know, there's different styles of arrangements. There's mm -hmm. the long ones. There's the triangular ones. Yeah. There's the I like what mostly what I see from you is the, the Very organic, rounded and asymmetrical. Right, kind of, yeah. right. And but where do you think this all comes from? I mean, how did you practice? You know, like I started as a little child, yeah, not knowing what I was doing. Exactly. I am self-taught, and I. You know, it's hard for me to even like call myself an artist because I don't see myself that way. But, but I are. do think I have, you know, just a feel for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't think it's impossible to teach people that. Um, but I do sort of like feel it when I'm working with the yeah. flowers. And yeah, um, do you have like flower arranging parties? That you I could have, do that, you I, know. Oh, believe me, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, I have taught a couple workshops before through the um, WS Badger Ecology Center mm -hmm. and am doing another one this June, mm -hmm. making floral crowns. Oh, so and then, beautiful. And some other fun stuff, too. Um, basically just playing with flowers yeah. for the morning. Yeah. But So do you have anything that is your favorite to, to do, to arrange? Like, do yeah. you like to do the... I love making the bridal bouquets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you feel there's like you're having part of their, oh, yeah. their day? Oh, yeah. And there's something about just making that one piece that's going to be in all the photos, and the bride is going to have a connection with that mm -hmm. for the rest of her life. She's going to look at that and be like, that was my bouquet. It feels really special, mm -hmm. and it is. I like to make them big and fun and wild. Mm. So, You know, I wish I had known about you when I got married because <laughs> well I, I have done recommitment ceremonies <laughs> well, maybe that's what we'll have to do <laughs> just for the fun of it yeah but I had I had um, echinacea in my yard mm -hmm. and we got married in July and then echinacea was blooming and I was like what am I going to have for a, a flower arrangement and so I went to the florist and I said I picked these flowers mm -hmm. and this is what I want you to use and I'm sure that they were like Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful. They used, um, it, they were pink echinacea and they used some green accents. And I can't even mm -hmm. tell you what kind of flowers they yeah. were, but the arrangement was beautiful. Yeah. But it does, as the bride, it means so much to you to have something that it's exactly what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it and you're like, oh, how did you know? Like, did you read my mind? Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes such a difference. You know, uh, beyond the flowers, you know, you have to be really good at communicating when it comes to weddings mm -hmm. and uh, just be a really good listener and really patient and know that these people are in a really, you know, exciting but somewhat stressful time of their life. Yeah. So just being very compassionate. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a website. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Again, beautiful website. Um, it's got pretty much all the information on there yeah. about, you know, what you do and, and all of that. It's Vera for Flora Farm and it will be on the the uh, role at the end of the show. Is there anything else that you would like to share with me today about? Well, you mentioned the CSA program, oh, and I just think that's yes, really that's so important. unique because yes. a lot of people know about 
uh, vegetable CSAs. It's the same so concept, yes. community supported agriculture. Right. So the idea is you support the farmer by buying your share of that year's harvest in advance. And that gives the farmer the capital for you know, everything up front, the right. seeds, the soil, the, the heat for the greenhouse, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then they come back to you once everything is in ready to be harvested right. and you are a share member and you get, you know, a, a portion of the harvest delivered to you. So we do that with bouquets and you can get 10 weeks of bouquets that will be different mm -hmm. from week one to week 10. Um, and I have to say, I've seen them quite often. And again, I never thought I could um, justify yeah, buying flowers food, for myself. You know? mm -hmm. But I've been told by my husband <laughs> you have the go that he ahead. thinks that it's a good idea for us to have flowers in the house yeah. every week. And I thought, I could do that. Yeah, and with so, the CSA, yeah. there's different options too. People and, can buy their own bucket of flowers right. and do their own arranging or yeah. get the and bouquets. So. My husband likes to arrange flowers too. Yeah. but. Um, it, it's just such a wonderful thing to be able to um, buy them. And you were telling me before, they're all paid for. Yeah. So I would get a free gift in, a, in my <laughs> head yeah. every week for 10 weeks. Yeah. And that's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to thank you, Sarah, for joining us today. You're this welcome. Was great. It's been I, a pleasure. I hope it's inspired people to either have their own uh, garden yes. or to come and visit with you. Definitely or, garden, grow flowers. Yeah. <laughs> and organic. Organic is very important. You know, I, I don't mean to be on a, a soapbox, but it's very important for people to start thinking about those kinds of things. Yeah. 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 So again, thank you. You're welcome, yeah. Jody. <laughs> yeah. So today we've been in my backyard and I want you to go out and make a plan. It doesn't have to be everything, but make a plan and enjoy what you do in your backyard, in your world. I want you to love life. I want you to live well, and I want you to be grateful because we all have lots to be very, very thankful for. So I'll see you again in my backyard. And again, thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.